Ghana's Transport Minister Fiki Lembalula to urgently address attacks on bus company Intercape. The bus company approached the court after about 150 violent attacks on its fleet were recorded. Most of those attacks occurred in the Eastern Cape. To give us more detail on what's expected now of the Transport Minister, we're joined by the Intercape CEO, Johan Ferreira. Johan, good to have you and thank you very much for your time once again um, here on In Focus. Uh, the last time, of course, the court uh, ordered this. The, the minister then uh, went on to, to appeal this particular uh, court order that was compelling him to draft an action plan to stop the attacks on the Intercape's long-distance buses. What has been the development now? Well, what has developed is that the court has now found again the second time in Intercape's favour. Intercape applied for a 16, uh, Section 18 application, which effectively means that the, the order that was initially um, issued um, against the MEC of Transport of the Eastern Cape, uh, that a, a, a protection plan has to be drawn up and implemented with the utmost urgency will stand, nevertheless, the application for leave to appeal. Um, the, if we didn't do that, then the leave to appeal application would have nullified the founding of the judge, uh, the, the first founding in terms of compelling the um, minister, the national minister and the MEC to do something about these attacks. So, yeah, um, we now have a situation where a national minister are being forced by court uh, to do his job uh, and the MEC of Transport of the Eastern Cape as well. The problem that we now have is that the plan that they have put forward is so intangible, fickle, and, 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 and you know, it, it's worrisome to us that if this plan of this would be implemented, it, none of it will, will work properly. So Intercape has now gone ahead and draw up a, a, a comprehensive plan for the protection of its passengers and drivers in the Eastern Cape. And this plan is now being submitted to the National Minister and also the MEC and the police for their consideration. And if they again ignore the plan and, 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 and want to push ahead with this very feeble plan of theirs, we will take them to court and we will ask the judge to implement the plan that Intercape has compiled um, to uh, ensure the safety of the passengers. So it is of great concern that you have to drag a national minister to court, first and foremost to do his job, and once the court tells him to do his job, then he puts this very feeble plan forward. So, you know, Fakila and Balula has now left a real mess for his successor. I believe he's going to now be the general secretary of the ANC. And uh, I think the ANC is already a party struggling and falling apart. And, you know, it just might be that um, Fakile and Belula will be the man that will take the ANC to its grave because he's now in charge of the NEC. So you, more than anything else, you would like, for example, the MEC uh, for transport in the Eastern Cape to opt for, for cooperation with you as opposed to to bring in certain elements of the plan that you have uh, put in place uh, to, yeah. to, 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 to implement uh, that. Uh, what are you suggesting they should be doing that they, they seemingly are so strongly opposed to that they can even uh, go ahead and appeal this particular court order? Well, the, the line is very bad. I can't really hear your question, but, but, but the gist of it is that, um, for instance, they, 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 they bring forward roadblocks at Awar Tambo. Now, Awar Tambo is in, in, in Gauteng. It's very far from the hotspots areas in, in the Eastern Cape. So the, they, they, the MEC and the police and the national minister knows exactly where the no-go zones are. There are five towns in the Eastern Cape. And Norbo and Tormo and, and, and these places, Butterworth, they're very far from they are our Tambo uh, airport. So it, it seems that there is a complete disconnect with reality. Um, they would sit in an office and draw up a plan which will talk to their sort of normal course of business. But this is not normal course of business. This takes for a different 
plan of action. Yeah. And this is where the problem comes in. I don't believe they have resources and they want to follow the normal course of roadblocks and you know inspections, but it's inadequate. You know, it's inadequate. There's much, much more that needs to be done to open up these areas. And we have in great detail, and we were at pains to put this plan together. Give me one or two things in, in your plan. I see the Democratic Alliance, for example, suggesting that the Western Cape government uh, uh, could probably be providing uh, escorts for long-distance buses. Is that something that uh, you, you would probably be calling for? If, you know, if, if all else fails, I now see that, that ESCOM has now deployed the army. <laughs> I think if all else fails, then we have to call on the police and the army or whichever security is needed to escort the bus. But this is not the solution. The solution is, first and foremost, they have to go into dialogue. And if I say they, then the PRI, the pr provincial regulatory entities, which are ultimately responsible for issuing permits, they have to call for a Section uh, 79 uh, uh, inspection. And they have to look at every long distance permit holder, for instance, between the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape, and see if they're legitimate, where they operate from, and are they vehicles roadworthy, and are they legitimate operators? That's the first and foremost thing. They have to clear up the, the, the permit system. Secondly, they have to go into dialogue with the taxi associations, specifically in the Eastern Cape, to ensure the safety of Intercape and other long distance bus operators once they return to these no-go zones. And this dialogue will take some time. And thirdly, they have to be present at these hotspot areas. They have to escort the coaches into the towns, be present at the loading areas, and be present and escorting the coaches out of uh, the no-go zones. So there are a lot of practical implications which you cannot put on the police or the traffic department that does their day-to-day -day job because this is a, spe a special operation to get the no-go zones open and then for a period of time monitored on a 24-7 basis. So it would take a task team between the provincial regulatory entities, the police, the traffic department and the police um, to ensure that we can open up these, these, these areas in a safe way. Yeah. What, what was the rationale for the minister refusing to participate in the process uh, of the formation of this action plan? Um, this, this line is a bit bad. So I, I think you are asking what, what made the minister change his mind. Is that correct? No. What was the rationale? You say you, you invited the minister to form part of the formulation of this plan and he refused. What, what was the rationale? What was his reasoning for refusing to participate? Well, to invite the minister, it's, it is important to, you must remember, this problem of, of, of shooting incidences and stoning incidences is not a singular province problem. This is a national problem. So close to 200 cases has now been reported of shooting incidences in KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng and the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape. So there are four provinces here four out of the nine provinces that is affected by shooting incidences and then the rest is stoning incidences. So we need the minister on a national basis to coordinate not only with one province but between all the provinces. So what happens in the one province spills over into the other province. So we need the minister's assistance on a national basis. Now that, uh, of course, the minister is, as you put it, uh, at uh, Lutuli House duty, there will be a successor there. Chances are uh, the, the incoming transport minister will still need to familiarize him or herself uh, with some of these issues. And uh, certainly do you expect that this would delay the work that you want already to be in place, even in this festive season as we speak right now? Yeah. Look, yeah, I, I believe the Kile Balula is now moving on as Secretary General. Um, and he's now left a, a real mess for his successor, uh, a, a blood trail. Um, we warned him that he's going to have blood on his hands, and he chose to ignore us, so now he's left this, this blood trail for his successor. Um, I, I, I cannot believe that his successor will be worse uh, than him because he did nothing. You can't do less than nothing. I mean, that, 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 that would be really something. So I, I hope that his successor will will take issue 
um, with this huge problem that we have. And first and foremost, come and talk to me and the rest of the intercity operators and to talk to uh, Santaco. He has to start at the top and work his, down, his way down. Um, and you can only do this by uh, talking to the people on the ground. It doesn't help to sit in Pretoria uh, in your high office and you know, write a letter or ignore a letter uh, or to make a statement without factual proof. So you know, in the end of the day, what we must realize here, people's lives are at stake. People's lives are at stake. So this is urban terrorism. It's nothing less than urban terrorism. Imagine somebody shoots down a plane. So a bus carries 60 to 70 to 80 passengers. Yeah. That's half of the planes. I mean, many of the planes only carry 50 passengers. Right. So, so imagine a plane gets shot down. Yeah. That would certainly be seen and viewed as a terrorist attack. But Johan, we're out of time. Let's leave it there for today. Much appreciated, and thank you very much uh, for coming on. That's the